You know what? Sometimes being here sucks. And by that I mean being here sucks. This specific time and place. It's also 21st century, you know? Same old buildings, same old technology, same old semi-breathable air. What you need is time travel. What you need is The Sims 3 Into the Future, the 11th and final expansion pack to The Sims 3. Yes, you heard me correctly, this has been stated to be the very last of the full expansions to the game, and in turn is the last expansion review I will ever do. <sighs> At least until The Sims 4 comes out and kills us all under the sheer weight of its no doubt dozen plus expansions, so don't get too sad, I'm not going anywhere. Play with traveling to the future and back. Shape and alter the future. Disrespect your fellow man. Play God for your own selfish desires. Screw over your descendants for the here and now. Totally not a commentary on certain publisher business practices. Nope, nope. Into the Future begins in the here and now with a bright blue loading screen composed of approximately 648 hexagons. Not quite those of the turquoise sun variety, but hey, probably close enough for some Canadian boards out there. There is no new town included with this expansion, at least not in the sense that you can choose it from the main menu, so just slather up an old save or chart a new future for yourself with a new game in an existing town. Doesn't matter what you pick, because before long some crazy crap will start happening right in front of your vision organs. It's a portal of mystery, a mysterious portal, a gateway to another time. It's also an eyesore that randomly appears anywhere on your lot, so you may want to remove it somewhere more appropriate later. Anyway, some doofy looking dude will come waltzing out of there saying, Marty, you've got to come back with me. He then gives you a time almanac, and it's up to you if you want to follow him or not. And being that his name is Time Traveler spelled backwards, of course you're going to go with him because that stuff is legit. But first, you have to collect some stupid glowing tubes from your yard. Okay, time to go. Welcome to Oasis Landing, a completely new town in a completely new location with completely new people, places, and things. So yes, apparently the time portal is more of a space-time portal, but whatever man, technicalities. You may don't think it'd be like it is, but it do. Now one might think, well, this place looks acceptably decent. I mean, depending on who you ask, the future is either going to be bright or it's going to be grim, but for it to be just kind of average won't well, color me meh. But see, there's a good reason for that, as this is actually the neutral future. As you play the game, you can influence things in a variety of ways to also get a utopian or dystopian future when you next time travel. Things are more or less the same in each of them, but they do have different aesthetics and a few unique things going for them. The dystopian future is about what you'd expect. Everything has a shade of Fallout Mad Max The Road to it, but without all the truly horrible stuff that comes along with said post-apocalypses, you know, like rampant murder, injustice, irradiation, Mel Gibson's chest hair, stuff like that. In fact, you could just call the dystopian future the dirty future, because really everything's the same, just a bit dirtied up. It's not so bad here, really, just some extra smog and occasional pile of useful garbage, not unlike certain metropolitan areas in our world today. Oh yeah, and this happens too. So that can be a hassle, I guess, but still, it just makes you dirtier, no big deal. Then there's the utopian future, and this, uh, well, it's freaking La La Land. Not only is everything absurdly bright and shiny, but the trees and shrubbery look like something right out of Katy Perry Sweet Treats. <laughs> yes, Utopia. Everyone is far too happy. Tosses magical colored goo at each other and walks around like a nut job because everything is just wonderful. To be honest, it kind of freaks me out in a very Stepford Wives kind of way, so I tend not to spend too much time here because I'm a realist. But anyway, whatever future you find yourself in, there's a ton of things you can do, and if you continue talking to your time-traveling tour guide, he'll give you a bunch of them as sort of a tutorial. One of the first things you'll come across are the new modes of transportation, the first of which is the jetpack. While I will say that it's about time Sim Duke Nukem got a jetpack, it leaves a bit to be desired. Don't get any bright ideas of hovering over your house and city at will, because much like the hot air balloon added in Aurora Skies, it just lets you hover straight up and then teleports you to far-off destinations. 
Another mode of transport is the hoverboard, which is full of all kinds of power of love in my book. It's a proper replacement for walking, and even if it's not made by Mattel, it's just awesome. You also still have cars, which act exactly the same as old school cars, except they hover and have an aesthetic that would make Rick Deckard feel right at home even while crying in the rain. And lastly, you have the new monorail tram system. It's a train thing that floats along a trail of Pac-Man pills, so that's neat. In practice, it's not much faster than a car, but at least it's something different, and hey, mass transit is transitionally massive. Oh, and if you have the limited edition of the pack, you get the Quantum Power Pack, which is a ridiculously overpowered nanosuit exoskeleton thing, which allows you to teleport all over the place by violating wormholes. One thing you can do with all this transportation is track down any descendants your sim may have. Yes, the game will so kindly generate a future family tree based on your current day sim's traits, actions, career, partner, and otherwise. Coming into contact with them may not exactly be thinking fourth dimensionally and may just tear a hole in the space-time continuum, but chances are the worst that'll happen is that your future offspring are poor, unhappy, and think you are a giant douche nozzle. So if your future family disowns past you, you can always go with the futuristic family alternative with Plumbots. Not to be confused with Simbots from the Ambitions expansion, Plumbots are very advanced, very customizable, and very human-like androids that can do practically anything a human sim can do but better. Yes, that too, I know what you're thinking. If you want one or more of these guys, all you've got to do is drop by your local Plumbot retailer and purchase one. Or you can take the DIY approach and purchase, scavenge, or create the components and make one yourself, which is not only a new skill but a career if you so desire. And the new Create-A-Bot mode allows you to choose from a seriously impressive number of parts and configurations, allowing for bots ranging from the tackiest woohoo machine to a balls of literal steel, Robo Duke. I am the real Duke Nukem, balls of steel. These bots can be augmented with all sorts of traits, from simple things like knowing how to cook, clean, and play chess, to stuff that would make Asimov squeal with intrigue. Like being able to learn, think, love, and even turn against humanity. And yes, bots can not only fall in love with Sims, but with each other. They can get married, and oddly enough, even make other bots in their own image. Just one sentient yet evil chipset away from a Skynet-like uprising, and that's kind of awesome. To prepare for Judgment Day, of course, you'll need the proper futuristic attire, and how's that for a segue? It comes in variants for men, women, children, teens, and whoever else needs clothing, which is everyone. Honestly, the clothing disappoints me for two reasons. One, it's just ugly. It looks like a spastic mix between original series Star Trek and The Hunger Games. And two, where's my Road Warrior attire, my Raider outfits, my worn-out rags and goggles and spikes? It seems like they were going for a rather upscale, utopian look overall, which isn't exactly fitting for all future scenarios. Oh well, at least he gets silly facial hair that looks like it was styled by someone on PCP, so that's something. The rest of the items are all more or less just quote-unquote futuristic versions of old items, sometimes with a new feature or two packed in there. Like, kids get a virtual pet thing that can be played with, talked to, and fed and all that, which works a lot like an imaginary friend from the Generations expansion. You also get computers that look like Jedi training orbs that project Minority Report crap in front of your face. TVs and video games that are holographic and somehow still play freaking skate and burn out paradise hundreds of years into the future. Beds that are now sleeping pods that allow you to choose specific dreams beforehand which help you level up your skills while you rest. Chess tables that may as well come with pointy ears and a set of immaculately maintained bangs. Sonic showers that take care of scrubbing your nads without having to waste time stripping down. Food and drink synthesizers that allow you to replicate your tea Earl Grey hot. Laser Rhythmicons that are basically theremins from a futuristic Spencer's gift store. And the bountiful chairs, which don't do a single thing different because good god, why the nuts would they? They're freaking chairs. There are also plenty of other assorted things to do, like exploring the wasteland for nanites, imbuing rare crystals with emotions for your plumbots, and even discovering the secret of a crashed alien vessel. But I won't spoil what that is here for you. Okay, it's an ad showing the concept art for The Sims 4, naturally. Oh look, here's an ad for SimCity's Cities of Tomorrow expansion. Ugh. Even centuries into the future, we can't quite escape the marketing machine of EA, can we? And when all your future experiences are over with, you can snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Back to the real world just as you left it. 
Except now, with all your sweet future tech and experiences completely ruining it. Seriously, it's like you never had to go to the future in the first place, and you can grab all the new awesome stuff in build mode anyway and place it right there. But whatever, there is a point to coming back in that you can influence the future world by doing things like winning the lottery, becoming a philanthropist, and as a result, a statue of you looking like a doofus will be erected of you in the future. Yeah, the length some people will go to to get stoned. Literally. That's a bad joke. So is The Sims 3 Into the Future worth buying or not? As has been the case from day one, the suggested retail price is 40 US dollars, and for me, the price is just barely worth it. To put it bluntly, I had a lot of fun with this crap. Seeing your later generations of Sims exploring the wasteland for red herrings, building love-making robo-dukes, and figuring out what all the new future tech alters is a lot of fun. In fact, this is more or less exactly what I wanted from The Sims Medieval, just an expansion that keeps the core Sims gameplay intact, but somehow introduces a new location and or time period. And in that regard, this is well worth the money to me. On the other hand, it's highly specific in the type of experience it provides and is a massive departure to the look and feel of the base game. It's all sci-fi all the time, and whether or not you like that as a part of your simming experience will determine if you think this is awesome or not. For me, I like it for a time as a distraction, but I don't see myself using anything as part of my normal gameplay just because it's so far-fetched. But yeah, don't let that stop you if you do like weird sci-fi in your sim life, because Into the Future is here in the present, and it's got a lot on offer. Did you enjoy something about this video? Well, I've got plenty more on The Sims 3 and a bunch of other stuff too. Click one of these video clips and it'll take you to them. Or just click subscribe because I put out a new video every week and there's a ton more coming. And as always, thank you for watching.